I think it's the nature of humans to want to understand where we came from and where we are going. We can't know the future, but we can know the past to some degree, and that gives us some idea of what to expect or you know, even potential solutions to the problems that we might be facing. Being able to extract data about the history of the Earth gives us a perspective that is non-static and allows us to get a feel for the constantly changing Earth that we reside on. We're really lucky in that we have this whole geologic record that shows Earth operating under totally different conditions, totally different temperatures, totally different continental configurations. And so the sediment records that we look at from the ocean are really our window into accessing that geologic record of variability. Scientific ocean drilling is basically using technologies to take samples from beneath the seafloor to access times back in history, whether it's the last few thousand years to hundreds of millions of years ago, to understand the way that the Earth works. I like to analogize it to on-land geology. When you're out in the field and you see all these different layers of rocks on top of each other, the exact same thing is happening under the ocean. It's just much harder to access. So to be able to do that, we have to take a boat out into the ocean, put pipes and drill bits down on the seafloor and drill down into that stratigraphy so that we can bring it back up and see what it looks like. IODP is the latest iteration of a series of scientific ocean drilling programs that have extracted sediment and rock from the ocean floor and allowed us to examine Earth systems and history. So in the past, as sediments or mud in the ocean slowly accumulated, it provided a record that collected information through time. So if we can access that record, then we have the ability to kind of pull back that information. And figure out what in detail happened then and use those as clues to what may happen in the future. And we do this by looking at sediment cores, which are a library of Earth's history. So we have this library that is just waiting to be recovered and we go and we get the cores and each layer, each thin, tiny millimeter scale layer tells us something about what Earth was like at that time. So core is what you pull out of the seafloor. So when you drill into the seafloor, you essentially leave behind an open tube and the core is all the stuff that used to make up that tube. And so they tend to be 10 centimeters or a few inches wide in diameter, and then up to 10 meters long. There are the data that says, if you have this cause, this is that effect. And having cores gives you that dimension of time. 70% of the earth is covered in water. So by not looking at that geology, all of the geology knowledge that is held underneath the ocean, we're missing out on 70% of the geological knowledge that the earth has to offer. The reason that we study the past is to really learn about the future. We as a species are presented with many challenges ahead, particularly with regard to climate and natural hazards. And we're gonna to have to, as a society and as a species, learn to adjust to these changes. It's absolutely critical that we understand how Earth's climate behaved in the past, and also what has affected climate in the past. We can't even begin to understand how we're impacting Earth's climate now until we understand how the Earth impacts its own climate and regulates its own climate. Because these changes that we see with past climate events are similar to ones we might experience in the future. You know, there's, there's different uh, what we call analog climate states where we might have CO2 levels um, in the past that were similar to, to different levels we project in the future. So say for example, if you go back about three million years ago, it was the last time that Earth's atmosphere had carbon dioxide similar to what we have today, around over 400 parts per million. And the really convenient thing about this time period about three million years ago is that there was a series of flips of the Earth's magnetic field that occurred during that same time. So by studying these cores and looking for where those flips occurred, I can get my record off the coast of Antarctica and say what was going on in Antarctica three million years ago. And then I can go up to the North Pacific and say, well, what was going on oceanographically there too? Because that flip of the magnetic field occurred simultaneously in both places. And it gives us these golden spikes 
to make these connections. It's an amazing thing actually that cores even record this geomagnetic variability just in itself. There's a lot of changes that we expect to see uh, in the oceans if we surpass a certain temperature threshold. And we know that's from other past climate events where you get these big changes. One of the big events uh, in the last 65 million years is the Eocene Oligocene transition, where we went from a warm house climate to a cool house climate. It's when the first uh, ice sheets on Antarctica started to form. And that was a big extinction in the plankton because these are things that had evolved in a warm house world. They were used to living in a world with no ice and all the oceanographic conditions that go with that. And so when the ice sheets grew and the oceans changed, a lot of these organisms that were adapted to that went extinct. And if we do something similar today in the opposite direction, you know, everything today has been evolved in a cool house world, an ice house world. And so if we move too far away from that ice house world and we change the, the oceans further than they've changed, you know, with these past interglacial cycles, we could see a similar major extinction in the oceans. Well, we have to be able to make informed decisions. We know our planet's changing and we know that we've changed the chemical composition of our atmosphere. These are things that we don't really argue anymore, but we don't know how parts of our system are gonna to respond to those changes. So this is really our only way to answer these kind of fundamental questions of how do things actually change across warming events, across ocean acidification events, things like that. I think it's critical that we have a, an international capability that can go out into the oceans and acquire these critical cores below the surface. And so a, a program like the International Ocean Discovery Program, what they did is go into the world's oceans to explore them and capture records of the past to really understand how the world works. And right now that's more critical than it's ever been. Using the technology in the drilling program is the only way to do this type of science. I can't even fathom where the science would be without it, right? We'd be so restricted in what we're able to study and also the fidelity of the records that we can look at. You know, so much of the knowledge that we look to gain in the future comes from that capability. It's something that as a young scientist, I would love to have access to in the future. Our Earth is an amazing planet, and we have learned a lot of it over the last, you know, 40 years in this program. There's just so much more to learn. We have so many questions left to try to answer. I think sometimes it can seem really esoteric, the idea that we go out for months at a time and we live at sea and we collect hundreds or a thousand meters of mud and rock from the bottom of the seafloor, but it does have big implications for all of us. It's how we understand what the Earth looks like, how the Earth's changed in the past, how the Earth will change in the future. There's still time to change these things, and that whether or not we live through a sixth extinction depends entirely on what we do over the coming years. There are lots of evidence of resilience in Earth's past within ecosystems, and, and they can bounce back really well if we give them the space to, if we don't push the system too far. There is hope that by using our understanding of the system that the Earth is, that we can mitigate the effects intelligently. We can try to go for these targets like one and a half degrees C change. They, they really make a difference because we know about from past events what tipping points look like, where you go over certain thresholds and a cascading series of events happen that we really don't want to live through. So we want to use that knowledge and let's use scientific drilling as a tool to tell us about what happened in the past and use it to mitigate the future.